So write this quadratic into the complete square format. Okay, so a nice beautiful way to do this here, yeah? and we're also going to review complete square here. So the trick is, is to firstly re literally factor out the three first, because that's going to make a problem here. Yeah? So taking out three and just do a big square bracket, we're going to have x squared divided by three, get minus four x. Because seven is not divisible by three, if you, if you divide it by three, you just get seven over three. Yeah, so leave it in that form. Now we're going to complete the square of this inside bit. So I'm going to change the color pen for a second. So again, big square bracket. To complete the square, um, underline the first two terms and then wrap it in a half the second term. So you can get x minus 2 all squared. Copy the third term, plus 7 over 3, and then minus it by the, the value you just factorized squared. So 2 squared. And that's it. Now, yeah, we're actually done here. So now all you want to do is literally, to get into this correct form, the a times the bracket, it will be 3 times the bracket, which would be, again, 3 times the bracket, literally. And now for the plus c term, you notice there's no bracket around it. So it's basically 3 times these two. So in your calculator, put 7 over 3 minus 2 squared, and then multiply that against 3. And when you do that, you're going to get exactly minus 5. And that's it. You've literally completed the square. Okay, part b. So the line of L is the line of symmetry of the curve with equation from part A. Okay, so this is the quadratic from part A. Using your answer to part A, in other words, this equation here instead of that, or otherwise, write down an equation of L. Okay, before we even figure out what this line of symmetry is, let's go ahead and sketch this curve, because that's going to help us solve this question easily. Yeah? So here's our x-axis and our y-axis. Now, two things you need to know from uh, completing square equations. One is the turning point. The points we just found here, these, these key values here, 2 and 5, are actually the turning point of a curve. Now, one thing we need to know is that this is a quadratic equation. So it's going to be a positive U-shape, yeah? So that, because it's a positive coefficient, it'll be a U-shape. Now, this turning point means it's going to be the lowest point on this curve, which is going to be a coordinate of a y coordinate of minus 5 and x coordinate of plus 2, by the way. It's always opposite here. So the turning point is going to be positive 2 and what you see, negative 5. And let's just say 2 is here and minus 5 is here, yeah? So it's going to be somewhere around here. So our shape looks a bit like that. Now, if you want to, now because it's a, it's a quadratic equation, it's going to have a perfect symmetry across. And this also means is that the line of symmetry can only occur over here through the center. And that's it. So this means that the line of symmetry cuts through 2, so the equation is x equals 2. And that is what they want. The curve C with equation y equals 10x minus 3 times x plus 1, so a quadratic factorized, and the line with this equation intersects at the points A and B. Okay, so just wherever this curve is, let's just say it's quadratic probably, and you've got a line here, and this is A and B, yeah? Find the corners of the midpoint of AB, in other words, this coordinate M, yeah, the midpoint. Now, before we get to the midpoint, when you intersect um, a curve with a line, this means you solve them simultaneously, right? Literally, think simultaneous equations with intersection. Now, when you do that, you're going to end up finding the corners of, you're going to end up finding a pair of X and Y corners, one being A, one being B. And to get the midpoint, well, we can get to that next. I'm guessing this is six marks or something. Whew, yeah, six marks. So let's go ahead and try and solve this problem, yeah? So first things first, to do this easily, Let's go ahead and make y the subject here, yeah? So we can have y equals 6x. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go ahead and expand this fully, yeah? And simplify this equation. So we're going to get y equals, and then expand this double bracket. We use a FOIA method. It'll be 10x times x, 10x times 1, uh, minus 3 times x, and minus 3 times 1. <coughs> Doing so, you're going to get um, 10x squared plus uh, 10x minus 3x minus 3 okay and by the way this all equals to y yeah so all of this also equals to 6x yeah so this equals 6x too and now all you want to do is go ahead and make all of this equal to zero yeah so move everything to the left hand side so we're going to have 10x squared collect in like terms 10x take away 3x is 7x minus 6x across you can get plus 1x you left with minus 3 and it's now set to zero so okay so we're almost done now, what you want to do here, let's have a look. You, you now want to factorize this equation. So this is going to be the, the main part. To factorize it, just use a quadratic formula, which is x equals minus b plus minus um, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where 
a equals 10, the first value, b equals 1 for 1x, and c equals minus 3. So when you substitute everything back in, and when you use the plus button in your calculator, you should get a first result of x equals half. And then when you plug everything back in and use um, the negative part of the plus minus bit, you're going to get minus 3 over 5, yeah? So that's your x coordinates. Now this is easy. Since you know what y equals, since y equals 6x, you can say therefore, let's use it right here, y equals 6x, therefore, when x equals half, you plug in half here, so 6 times half is 3, so we can get when x is a half, y is 3. So let's make coordinates here. For the second bit, when x equals minus 3 over 5, if you times again 6, so you're going to get, let me write it down, you're going to get minus 18 over 5. If you prefer in decimal form, which you can, it will be minus 0 0.6 and minus 3.6. Okay. And yeah, this will be 0 0.5 and 3. Now, so we found two pairs of corners, so it doesn't matter what, where is where, by the way, yeah? What is what? They want us to find the corners of the midpoint of AB, so the, the corner M. So to get the corners of any midpoint, the trick is, is that you have to add the X corners, so 0 0.5 plus minus 0.6, so let me do it the other way around, minus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5, and then you half it. This gives you the x coordinate. To get the y coordinates, you do the same. So add up minus 3.6 and 3, so minus 3.6 plus 3, half it, and you get the y coordinates. And when you do that, you're going to get something like uh, minus 0 0.05 for x, and minus 0 0.3 for y. And that's it, guys. That is your midpoint. So, okay, so OPQ is a sector of center O, and OAB is, is a small sector. So in other words, we've got a massive sector here, and they give us a small sector here. Okay, so a sector within a sector. Now, A is the point on OP, so this point A, such that O to A and A to P is in the ratio of three parts, two parts. In other words, if this had like, I don't know, a radius of, let's say, let's, what, let's say this was 3x, this would have to be 2x its length. Okay? And B is the same. So again, 3x and 2x. So what this tells us so far that this is basically a radius of the same amount. So this is definitely a sector. Now, angle POQ is 45. The area of the shaded region is 81 over 2 pi. So let's just highlight that, yeah? Work out the perimeter of the shaded region. Oof, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Okay, to work out the perimeter, let's, let's try this out, yeah? Before we even do that, let's try and figure out what the, the true radius is so we can actually work out the, the more finer details, yeah? So what we could do so far is pretty much write down every possible formula so far, yeah? So we can say that the area, since we're dealing with area, the area of a sector is going to be, it's always a fraction of the 360 times the area of a circle, pi r squared. Let's call this little one area 1 and call this entire shape, then the massive sector with radius of 5x um, and area 2, yeah? So to work out area 1, it's going to literally be um, 45 over 360. I'm, I'm just going to simplify that quickly here. Yeah? That's going to be 1 over 8 times pi, and the radius is 3x squared, so 3x squared, yeah? Now for area 2, it's the same thing. The massive shape is going to be 1 over 8 um, times pi. The radius is 5x squared and we know that the total area is going to is going to be firstly 81 over 2 pi plus that little area a1 and yeah so far so good so now you can kind of probably see that we're going to deal with some sort of <laughs> simultaneous equation again yeah so what we could do since you've got a1 here you can you can literally substitute this equation into there let's try it out for a second yeah we're going to now have 1 over 8 pi span 5x squared yeah it's going to be 25x squared equals 81 over 2 pi plus and then a1 the same thing 1 over 8 3x squared so 1 over 8 pi expand 3x squared you get 9x squared and now let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this here when you have pi in every single part of the term if you divide by pi they all cancel out also you got 25 and then you got all these x's yeah so we've got 1 over 8 25 x squared combine it, you get 25 over 8 x squared equals 81 over 2 plus and then same thing here you're gonna have 9 over 8 x squared so i think we could find the value of x so far so to find x now let's go ahead and make um, all the x terms on the left so subtract 9 over 8 x squared 
to the left hand side 2x squared equals 81 over 2 and then to find x divide 2 across so you can get 81 over 4 square root you're going to get square root 81 over 4 you get 9 over 2 which is 4.5 so yeah so conveniently x is 4.5 so now we can actually update this properly so let's just redraw our shape here so if x is 4.5 and the whole thing is 5x you can do 4.5 times 5 which just will give us a, a total length of 22.5 centimeters yeah so that's that is the the true radius of the whole sector and here's 45 degrees and now this is almost done yeah to find the length of an arc an arc is, an arc is this bit the formula is like this the length of the arc is actually the same as the area formula so it'll be 45 over 360 times the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r and that's it this will give us this l bit And when you put all of this in the calculator with the radius being 22.5, you're going to get exactly uh, duh, 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 a length of 45 over 8 pi. That's the length of the arc here. Okay, so we now found the big arc here, L1. And that's basically this part here again, yeah? We now need to find the small arc, L2. Now, to obtain L2, we just do the same thing. The only difference is, instead of the radius being 5x, it's just going to be a small radius of 3x. And remember, x was uh, 4.5, yeah? So just plug into this original formula here, with r being, uh, with the radius being 3x. And now you're going to get an actual total length of 27 over 8 pi. That's when you plug when you plug in everything here, yeah? So now, we, so now we've got everything, we literally just sum them up. So the total perimeter is going to be L1 plus this 2x length plus this other 2x plus L2. So let me just write here, yeah? So perimeter is gonna be the first arc plus the second arc plus 2x and 2x, which is 4x. So that's it. If you plug all this in the calculation, then end up with nine pi plus 18. And that's it, this is your final answer. Okay, the last question, let's do it. So the 10th term of an arithmetic series S is 66. And the sum of the first 20 terms of S is 1290. Find the fifth term. Okay, so to do this nice and easy, let's write down all the formulas we know about arithmetic series. First, we have the nth term, which I'm going to call it un. It's always given by a plus n minus 1 times d. And then we've got the sum of the first n terms, which, by the way, is given in the front of the book. is n over 2 times 2a plus, the same thing, n minus 1 d. So that's just a general formula for the for the nth term, like basically a position and the sum of the first n terms. Now it tells us from information that the tenth term is 66. So if we rewrite the first formula, we can say that a plus n minus 1d. So a plus, since we know it's a tenth term, n is 10, so it'd be 10 minus 1, so 90, must give us a result of 66. And we know that the sum of the first 20 terms, so s20. So we're going to have 20 over 2, which is 10 times 2 times a. And here, since n is 20, it will be 20 minus 1d, so it will be 19d. And it must equal 1290. Okay. And just to make simplify further, if you divide 10 across, you'll be left with 2a plus 19d equals 129. All right, so what do we do um, next from here? So now, if you look at both these equations for a second, yeah? Before we even solve the question, let's try and figure out what the value of a and the value of d is. And by the way, guys, I didn't say this earlier, but a is the first term and d is a common difference, yeah? So to solve this simultaneously, um, various methods, but what I'm personally going to recommend is, is to just go ahead and double this equation by 2, yeah? And subtract it from this equation here. And when you do that, you're going to have, at least when you double it, you're going to get 2a plus 18d equals um, double 66, 132, yeah? And that's it. So now we just solve this simultaneously. Subtracting the equation, you'll be left with d equals negative 3, which is perfect. If you know what d is, you can plug into the first equation and get a. So we're going to now have a plus 9 times minus 3, which is minus 27, equals 66. Adding 27 across, so 66 6 plus 27, you get 93. Okay, so it looks like we've done it. Now, finally, they want us to find the fifth term of S. So the fifth term, let's call it U5. And using the general form, which is over here. A, since we know what A is, A is 93, 
n is going to be 5, so it will be 5 minus 1, which is 4, times d, which is minus 3. And then putting this in your calculator, you're going to get 81 for the fifth term. And that's it, guys. Hope this video helped. And let me know if you've got any questions or any problems, or if you want me to break down anything further. But otherwise, I hope you guys had a nice day and enjoy the walkthrough. And I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.